Hey guys, welcome back to Olivia's Blooms. Um, for those of you who are new, my name is Olivia. I'm gardening in zone 7A in Central Virginia, Charlottesville area. So today it is late afternoon. Um, it's after work for me. I've just worked a full day and I just have a few garden chores I need to get done. I'm not gonna do anything too um, strenuous because it's hot out. Um, but you know, even on days where I work full time, I still, I love to get out and just do a few things here and there. So I figured I would take you along with me. So on the list for today, I'm going to be planting some cow peas in this bed here and these I've never grown before but they're supposed to do really well in our area. I got these seeds from Baker Creek and I've never tried them. Uh, some of you might know them as black-eyed peas but I have been growing so much Genovese basil and I have all of this delicious pesto and basil vinaigrette saved up that I thought these would be really yummy with some of that on them. They love temperatures of 75 to 95 degrees. We're right in that right now here in July. I think the highs for the next at least two to three weeks are gonna be in the 90s. And um, our first average frost date in my area is October 30th. So we still have probably three, three and a half months left in the growing season. So plenty of time to get these up and going. These are a, um, a vining crop, so I am going to be planting them on this beautiful trellis here that my husband got me. And this is where I just pulled out the sweet peas from earlier this year. So I'll put those right there. Also on the list today, I just need to stake up a couple things. So I've got some really inexpensive bamboo garden stakes. And I'm gonna be using, I bought these clips a few years ago they're okay. I'm not sure I would buy them again if I needed to stake something up. They're not as eco-friendly. Um, I prefer like twine or um, something else that'll break down over time. But I have these, so I'm going to keep using them until they break. And just a note about what was in this bed. So I had earlier in the spring a crop of a variety of bush beans. You can still see I have one plant left here. Let's take a look. So um, I got a decent amount of beans, but the plants didn't do as well as my fall crop last year. And I think that's because I planted them a little late. Um, we have very short springs here and it gets super hot, super fast. And I think beans prefer it um, a little bit cooler than these 90 degree days we're getting, but that's okay. I still got some, some good harvest off of them and I'm gonna replant another crop this fall, probably soon in the next few weeks. Also in this bed, I have some beautiful, um, these are sweet um, banana peppers that my husband likes to eat and I like to eat them as well. You can see one there. I have another couple of the banana peppers back there. I think one, I think one of these is a poblano, the one that's leaning. That's one of the ones I need to stay up today. And then I have leftovers, some of this kale. Um, it's probably a little bit hot for these kale plants. I find that kale doesn't taste nearly as good in this hot weather. It tends to be not as sweet and the texture's a little bit tougher than in the cool temperatures, but I'll still eat it once in a while just for, to get some nutrition and some greens in my diet. Um, but not, not the best time of year to be growing these. And then I'll probably just harvest uh, a few things that are ready to harvest today. All right, so let's get these seeds planted. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to amend the soil, now that I've pulled out the bean plants, is I'm gonna throw in some of this um, organic biotone starter fertilizer. Um, this is made by Espoma. It's one of my favorite fertilizers to use when I'm starting seeds or when I'm planting new plants. Um, it just promotes root development, um, and I always find I have good results, but you could certainly use any kind of slow release granular fertilizer. Um, and you probably should measure, but what I do is I just throw it on the bed um, in handfuls like this. And I, even though I'm only gonna be planting in this area today, um, I'm gonna be planting up the rest of this bed pretty soon with fall crops. So I'm just gonna go ahead and amend the whole bed while I'm, um, while I'm here and I've got the supplies. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this around, uh, make sure I get even coverage. And then I'm going to add on top of that, um, some of this Panorama Pay Dirt compost. And this is my 
by far my favorite compost. If you are in the local Charlottesville area, I highly, highly recommend this. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, um, but since I've been using this compost, I've had amazing results. Um, you can just kind of see the quality. It's this rich brown. It's really well sifted, not huge chunks of material. Um, and I just get mine at uh, Blue Ridge Co-op, um, but you can get it directly from them. I believe they sell it in bulk as well. Um, and I use this for any anytime I need compost. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this out, spread it around. And even though the soil is um, in pretty good condition here, um, I try to follow the no dig concept where um, I don't dig out my plants. Um, when I'm done, when a plant is done and I wanna take it out, I cut it off at the base and I leave the roots in the ground. And I can't remember who um, recommended that. I believe a couple sources recommended it um, because one, it's minimal disturbance to the ecosystem that's below the soil. So you're not ripping out any of those good microbes that might be in there. Um, and I don't know the exact science behind it. So I'm happy to point you to some um, resources that can give you more information, but um, it also just leaves more organic material in the soil. So um, that's what I do and I've had really good results. Um, but just to um, keep the soil full of nutrition, I will amend it like this every time I start something new. And you just need a thin layer. I don't, I don't put a lot of the thick layer around. And you can see I've got a drip system too, and I'll talk more about that um, and how I did the drip system uh, in another video or maybe when I do the garden tour. You know, I was really intimidated by the idea of a drip system, but it was it was easy and honestly anyone can do it and the supplies were not very expensive and it has been so, so helpful. All right, so before I get these in the ground, I'm just gonna um, wet the soil. When you're germinating seeds, you have to keep them wet the entire time until they're up um, and growing. So I've got a drip system here to help, but um, I think pre moistening it and just coming out when you're, when you're waiting for seeds to come up, just coming out maybe twice a day or so, unless it's raining, just give them some water always helps. So these are, I should have mentioned, these are full sun um, and it says to plant them four to six inches apart. So what I'm going to do is probably go on either side of the trellis, do here um, in the middle and on this side. And um, you can see I've got some twine here. Uh, I found that with these trellises, it helps to, with some of the, the plants that don't support themselves as well, some of the vines to have like a, a twine going up the middle just to help them get up and going. And that really worked well with my sweet peas. So I'll probably do the same with these once they're about 12 inches or so high. And I'm gonna go in and put um, two seeds in every hole, half an inch deep, just to make sure that um, I at least get one. Usually with new, brand new seeds, you get pretty germination, pretty good germination, depending on the plant itself. But I'm gonna do two just to be safe, and then I can thin those out to one once they're up. And again, these are a great way to use vertical space in your garden, and something you can plant um, and get some good fall harvests once your other beans or peas or whatever you're growing have uh, are done for the season. And I'm just gonna cover these up, pat them in. I'll probably give them one more rinse and then it's that easy. And I'll give you updates as these sprout. All right, so I'm just watering these guys in. Now, if you're a better gardener than me, you probably wanna put a little tag in here that says what you grew in the variety and the date. Um, I usually do that. I don't have any tags on me right now, so I'll probably come back later and do that or just refer back to my video and I can remember what I planted here. Now I'm going to real quickly stake up these two pepper plants. So I'm just going to take a couple of my stakes here, stick them in. And ideally you want to put stakes in before plants are this big. Um, I did for this pepper and somehow missed this one. It just minimizes having to stick something down through the roots. Um, it's not the end of the world if you have to do it, but I try and remember to stake things before they get, 
put stakes in before plants start growing and get tall, but it's as simple as that. And I'm gonna go around and get the other one up. Um, I'm gonna stake this pepper as well. See, I've already got the stake in here. I thought ahead for this one. And I'm not sure it even needs it, but um, just for safety purposes to help it in case we get some strong winds. I'm gonna go ahead and give that one some more support. And then let me grab my last clip. And get this guy supported. And this is about, for most pepper varieties, you probably only need one small stake like this if you're just growing them in your garden for, for your purposes. Oh, and I'll get this guy staked too. Um, so you don't need to buy any fancy large trellising system. I think a pack of those was pretty inexpensive, maybe a few dollars. And I'm just gonna get this last one up and support it. And then I've got one more plant I need to stake in another part of my garden. All right, so here I have some branching sunflowers and um, you might think you're growing giant sunflowers in the middle of your um, vegetable beds. Well, there's a couple reasons I threw these seeds in here um, a couple months ago, actually probably only about a month ago. So sunflowers are really quick growing. They're only about 60 days. They make great cut flowers. And so if you've got some space open in the summer, you pull out a spring crop and you don't need to plant your next um, crop for a couple months. If you've got a 60 day window, you can throw sunflowers in. These specifically are actually branching sunflowers. So I pinched these sunflowers and normally you do not want to pinch sunflowers. They are single bloom. Um, and if you don't know what pinching is, um, Florette has some great videos and so does Lisa Mason Ziegler from the Gardener's Workshop about why you pinch flowers and how you do it. Um, and the, um, Essentially, the reason is to get more longer stems from plants that branch. And so these are branching sunflowers, so I pinched them. And um, so I'm going to get lots of pretty cuts off of them, hopefully. And you also might say, why did you plant these so close together? Well, some really cool facts about growing sunflowers for cutting is um, typically when people think of sunflowers, they think of those giant, tall mammoth sunflowers. Um, and to some extent, how big sunflowers get based on, is based on the variety, but also it has a lot to do with how close you plant them together. And so if you plant sunflowers, some cut flower farmers do it even four to six inches apart. You get these tiny little sunflower heads that actually are the perfect size when you're making bouquets, and I love them that size. I think they work better than having one giant bloom that really doesn't match uh, anything else in an arrangement in terms of scale. So these are my branching sunflowers. I don't typically have to stake them, but I had one fall over, um, this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little support. I'm not sure if this is gonna be enough. This is a short stake. If I find that it's still kind of struggling, I may go back and get a taller stake, but I'm gonna see if this will work for now. Um, so hopefully here soon, I'll be able to show you some beautiful cuts off of these. All right, next on the list is filling up this bird feeder with some bird seed. And I mentioned this in, I think another one of my videos, but um, I have a bird feeder, not just because, you know, it is fun to see the different birds come into the garden and try and identify them, but also um, after watching a lot of experienced gardeners and farmers, um, one of the best ways to keep your garden healthy and pest free is to have a good food source and a good water source for the local wildlife. Um, and so I'm hoping that by having this bird feeder, I can invite the birds in and they'll help pick off maybe some of the bad pests. Um, hopefully not pick off my beautiful blueberries and strawberries, uh, just the, the pests. But so far it's been great and worked really well. I really like this bird feeder too because um, you can see here it has this little hinge and it's hard to show you without picking it up but um, if a bird, a light bird lands on here, um, it won't move and they can get to the food down here. 
but if something heavier lands on this, like a squirrel, uh, it closes shut and they can't get the food. And it has worked pretty well. So I uh, really like this style and effective in terms of squirrel deterrence. So let's get this filled with seed. I just have a basic all-American bird seed, nothing special. Again, this one-handed gardening is hard. Go ahead and fill it up. Super easy. Put the lid back on. And let's go hang it up. I have this uh, rickety pole here that you can see is leaning pretty heavily. I'll need to eventually probably put something new here, but for now it's holding up well enough. And one note on bird feeder placement. So when I first put this pole here, I thought, oh, this will be perfect. It's halfway through. Um, the bed from back to front provides some nice vertical interest and I didn't really realize that the birds drop the seeds right into my garden bed and if you look closely even here on my hanging basket you can see lots and lots and lots of grass seed this is from the birds and the seed that they drop and it's growing everywhere it's here it's down here amongst the lavender, and I've spent a lot of time, and you can even see the ones that haven't germinated yet, provide a nice mat. Spent a lot of time pulling these up, so probably a good idea to relocate this, and when you're putting up a bird feeder, um, either put it in a place that doesn't directly dump into your garden bed, or maybe put down some landscape fabric or some mature plants right below. And I'm really gonna focus on pulling this out because I'm hoping that in this area, the larkspur will be reseeding itself. And you can see those pods almost ready to, well, they're probably ready to harvest and spread out here in a few weeks to start growing again. But otherwise this bird feeder has been great. All right, on to my last chore, which is my favorite, which is seeing what's ready for harvesting. And as mentioned for this size garden, vegetable garden, um, and flower garden too, I guess you could say. I'm not getting a ton every day, um, but enough to have some snacks and to save up for some good meals. So I really think, you know, I cannot emphasize enough, you do not need a lot of space to grow a ton of food. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna be harvesting today are um, sweet pea pods and this time of year, my sweet peas are pretty much done. I know I mentioned that. Um, you can see here, the vines aren't looking amazing. I'm not really getting any more flowers, but what I do have and why I'm keeping these up are all of these gorgeous seed pods um, that at the right stage, you can pick and save your own seeds for next year. Um, I find seed saving so satisfying um, and so fun because not only is it you know free seeds for yourself to grow but also it's fun to share them we have an awesome seed swap at my work that um, people just come and bring seeds and I got to try so many cool things this year that I wouldn't have otherwise gotten to um, or had to have, I didn't have to buy a whole packet of seed to try them um, and I got to bring my own seeds too so this this one looks ready and um, Florette has a amazing video about how to harvest sweet pea seeds and when to harvest them. And I will link that below because um, I won't be able to do it justice, but um, I'm just grabbing the few of mine that look ready. Let's grab these guys too. And then interestingly, they like to burst open. So I throw them in this, um, this box because if I throw them in my garden truck, they might burst open and fall through the little holes and you can see actually one of them already did that I picked today and this is what a sweet pea seed looks like I can show you they're pretty big um, another reason they're easy to to grow 
So I'll bring those inside and then um, once I have a good collection, I will bust them open and put them probably in an envelope until I'm ready to plant them next year. See, I've got a few strawberries ready. I'm gonna go ahead and pick those. My onions are getting close. You can see they're starting to fall over. I'll probably be picking those here soon. See how they're falling over there? I'm gonna wait. I harvested tomatoes from my tomato forest yesterday, so I'm gonna give them another day. And then I'm gonna do my daily check first, yellow squash and cucumbers, because those can get big very quickly. This huge squash plant is doing well. You can see a little one there, not quite ready. Oh, and here, right here, here come the squash bugs. Um, probably what I do with these is I'll put some gloves on and just rub them off, but they're probably, if you see a few, they're probably everywhere. But that's okay. We got a lot of squash off these plants and I planted them here really to attract the squash bugs, so I don't see any yellow squash. Peek inside the tomato forest from the back. And I'm gonna check my cucumbers. No, I'm not quite ready. Let's check over here. There's a little guy, I'm gonna give him a little more time. A lot of gardeners say that this time of year when it's really hot, the cucumbers kind of turn more bitter. Um, Mine have been okay so far, especially, I think I mentioned the bait alpha variety. I haven't noticed any bitterness, but if I do, then I'll probably either try pickling them or maybe um, start peeling them to try and get rid of the bitterness. I don't see any ready here. And you can see these pickle bush cucumbers are loaded with blooms, these small little plants. I'm so excited to see how these produce because I've never grown this variety before. You can see lots of little guys forming, but I don't see anything ready for harvest. Oh, let's check this one. I think I'm gonna give this one a little more time. I've got so many inside. I'm gonna give it another day. All right, well, I think that's, that's all I'm gonna harvest and do for today. So thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, here is a little update on the cow peas that we planted just a few days ago. They have already sprouted. I planted these on Monday and it is now Friday and you can see them just starting to come up. Very exciting. I can't wait to see them get bigger. Hey guys, welcome back to Olivia's Blooms. Nope, 